Okay. So far we've done some fractions. Uh, we've talked about the real number set, rational numbers, whole numbers, integers, uh, and we've talked about irrational numbers and broken down a couple of fractions. And mainly, uh, or the most important thing we've talked about is the prime numbers, okay? Now, prime numbers. Um, integers, have, as we've said before, are uh, positive and negative whole numbers uh, and the whole number includes zero, so it starts off with whole numbers from negative infinity goes all the way to zero, from zero all the way to positive infinity. Now, any integer, positive integer, that is not a prime number is made up of prime numbers. And that is the main thing you have to grasp, which is you have to understand prime numbers to be able to deal with uh, the rational number set, which is really 90% of the numbers you're going to deal with in high school. So if you know the rational numbers, and to understand the rational numbers, you have to know the prime numbers, then if you know your prime numbers, you can deal with most of the numbers you're going to deal with in high school, or you're going to encounter in high school. So prime numbers are super important. So let's break down some more fractions, okay? Bigger ones this time. How much space do we have? We'll go all the way from here. I'm going to stick with blue, it's darker. The pink really didn't work out too well. Now, this time we added a division sign, right? Right there. The only thing with division sign is, what you do with it is, in a fraction, you change it to multiplication, and you flip this fraction. So, the first thing you got to do when you're multiplying and dividing fractions is take care of the division signs. So you're going to change this division sign into a multiplication and you're going to flip this. Now as we said before, as soon as you do something to another, break it down or flip it or anything like this, kill the numbers before it so you don't get confused. Now we're going to start breaking them down to their prime numbers. 8 is 2 times 4. 4 is 2 times 2. Yes? And we're going to kill the numbers before it. We no longer have a 4. 4 became 2 times 2, so it's gone. 8 became these guys. So 8 is really 2 times 2 times 2. 15, 3 times 5, 12, 2 times 6. 5 is 5 times 7. 75. Now, when you get to the bigger numbers, you're gonna, the more of this you do, the easier it's going to become because you're going to learn tricks how to do things. Now, if you see any number divided by uh, end that ends with 0 or a 5, you can divide it by 5. Any number that is ends as even, you can divide it by 2. Now, with 75, what I'm going to do is divide it by 25 because it's a multiple of 25. It makes life easier instead of dividing it by 15. So I'm going to take this and say it's 3 times 25. And 25 is 5 times 5. Can you see that? Uh, you can barely see it, but that's good enough. You know what's down there. So kill the numbers after that came before it. 104 that one. 104, it ends with a 4. It's an even number, so you can divide it by 2. 100 divided by 2 is 50. 4 divided by 2 is 2. So 104 divided by 2 is 52. Yes, yes. Now 52 is going to break down. 50 divided by 2 is 25. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So 52 divided by 2 is 26. Kill every number that has branched off. If it branches off, you kill the kill the number that is branching off from. So 104 was actually 2 times 2 times 2 times 13. And you can't break down 13 anymore because it's a prime number. So that's it. Now you've broken down this big fraction, multiple fractions multiplied together into their prime numbers, their core, what their, their, their core essence, what they're made out of. 
This is dealing with rational numbers. It makes life simpler. Okay. The more of this you do, the easier it becomes. This is doing it the long way. Well, not the long way, but this is doing it with every step involved. The more you do, the more steps you can eliminate. But make sure you're doing this enough that you know how to do it. Okay? Don't automatically skip steps and uh, try to do it the quick way because you're gonna, you're gonna make mistakes. Learn this process first and then start eliminating things. We'll talk about that stuff later, but right now let's deal with it this way. Now with fractions, if you remember what we said, is as long as there's no addition or subtraction sign between the numbers, if they're not being added or subtracted from each other, if it's only division, if it's only multiplication and division, then anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom. So, what do we got? Let's start knocking things off. Anything from the top can cancel out anything from the bottom. Five. Kill. Five. Five. What you want to do is, when you get a complicated thing like this, that's messy all over the place, you want to go through it and circle the numbers that are left. Because what you're going to do now is, multiply the numbers in the top and multiply the numbers in the bottom. Because whatever's in the top multiplies each other, whatever's in the bottom multiplies each other. Okay? What have we got? 3 times 7 is 21. 21 times 4. Well, what is that? We'll do it on the side. So 143 is 13 times 11. So the final answer for this thing is, let's see, where can we write it? We have absolutely no room. Well, the final answer for this thing is, is 143 over 84. So That's your final answer, 143 over 84. Now you know you can't break that down any further because you took it down to its prime numbers and nothing else can cancel each other. So if they give this to you in a test, a question saying reduce this, that's a trick question. You can't reduce it. You break it down to its prime numbers, nothing cancels each other off. So you're stuck with it. That's your final answer. That's multiplying and dividing fractions. It's super easy. What you have to do is practice it. I'm going to put some of the stuff on my website, uh, write out some problems, and I'm going to have the solutions in the bottom, uh, or some version of that anyway, so you can practice it. Make sure you go there and practice some of these things. Very important. Once you master prime numbers, you master integers, and since rational numbers are just fraction of integers, you master rational numbers. And uh, since you're in high school, uh, most of the numbers that you're going to deal with in high school are rational numbers, then you've learned how to manage numbers in high schools, which is 90% of what you're going to do in high school is dealing with rational numbers. In grade 12, it's a little different. Up to grade 11, you're just dealing basically with rational numbers. Some, uh, well, 10% irrational, 20% irrational, depending on your teacher. If your teacher's really good, they'll give you a lot more rational numbers because they're a lot more fun, or they've got a lot more power, let's put it that way. We'll talk later.